In traditional literature, tragic comedy is a clever little portmanteau describing works that include both comedic and tragic themes in their storytelling. In anime though, tragic comedy seems to be less a genre and more a narrative and emotional framework for a series to adapt and follow. The major proponent, if not architect, of this trend is one Jun Maeda, scenario writer and composer for Key, whose notable works include everything you see on screen, for which there will be spoilers. You have been warned. His style is, intentionally or otherwise, formulaic in how it establishes its world and characters. But rather than producing hollow and ineffective stories, he has created his own internal monomyth in the same styling as Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. Maeda's monomyth is inherently based in tragic comedy, and this isn't surprising since he's considered a pioneer in the nakige genre of visual novels, a genre known for its heavy emotional moments. Much like Campbell's monomyth, Maeda's first positions the protagonist in an ordinary world or equilibrium in order to set the stage. However, the equilibrium in a key series often proves to be a paradox. It is almost immediately pushed to the side in order to begin the narrative, yet at the same time it exists as necessary context to the protagonist's regular life. Depiction of the life before comes in many forms. The grayscale walk to school for Tomoya, Yu's selfish abuse of his powers, or even something as subtle as the few seconds of blackness before Yuzuru wakes up in Angel Beats. These moments are the clear beginning of Maeda's formula. A starting point. The second step is the protagonist exiting this equilibrium and entering a new location, be that physical or social. Think of Yuichi moving towns in canon, or Riki being contacted by the cats in Little Busters. This part of the narrative specifically exists to introduce the cast of misfit characters and endear them to the viewer. This is traditionally achieved, in almost everything key, by the very Japanese gap in expectations. Meaning that the difference between how someone presents themselves and how they actually behave is inherently comedic. For example, in Clanad, Tsunohara considers himself an intimidating delinquent, only to be regularly bullied and beaten up. Noda in Angel Beats also acts tough, only to be killed multiple times because of his own stupidity. Takajo in Charlotte gloats about his teleportation powers, but can't accomplish the simplest of tasks without serious injury. Even if it's not about a gap in expectations, most of the comedy in these series is a clash between strongly defined personalities. Stupidity and intelligence, pretense and reality, and freedom and obligation. It could even be argued that Maeda's style itself is predicated on this very same gap. These series often present as mundane moe slice of life capers and ultimately end up as something much more resonant. This phase of Maeda's style is usually fairly light on plot and only lasts a few episodes because once the cast is introduced and the viewer is invested, another change happens. The first crash usually happens early in key anime, the first glimpse of the potential for tragedy lurking beneath the series' veneer of comedy. These reveals serve as a warning. You are not watching the happy-go-lucky slice of life you thought you were. And now that you identify with these characters, that expectation will be used against you. Examples of this include Nagisa collapsing in Clanad, or you meeting Nao's brother. The scenes themselves come and go fairly quickly, but they foreshadow significant events later in the series. In longer shows like Clanad and Little Busters, these moments tend to appear once per character arc, making a series all the more potent, and the sense of impending dread all the more sinister. Things quickly go back to normal after the first crash, and the series will resume its comedic daily life with the looming guarantee that the drama will return. It serves as a perverse attempt to mimic the normalcy both the viewer and the characters once enjoyed, only this time with a certain tension lingering in the background. Again, in longer shows, these quieter moments can go on long enough for the viewer to almost forget the crash ever happened, or that it could happen again. This calm before the storm tends to take up the bulk of the series, allowing the bonds of the characters to strengthen, and the chance for some character arcs to be resolved. In Angel Beats, this is the SSS satisfying their dying wishes, and in Charlotte, it's the student council stopping people from using their powers. As each character arc ends, a taste of tragedy tends to arise, but it's usually self-contained and quickly resolved. The best examples of this are Yukine from Clanad and Komari from Little Busters, both coming to terms with their brother's deaths. While there are small crashes and resolutions to be found in minor arcs, once they are resolved, the overarching plot begins to change dramatically. The second and most significant crash that comes marks the complete turning point for the narrative, and drastically alters the show's universe. 
Not only that, but these moments regularly go on to define the very shows within the zeitgeist. Even if you've never seen Clannad, the show is characterised by Nagisa's death. If you haven't seen Charlotte, you've probably heard of the drastic tonal shift from episode 6 onwards. And the ending scene of Angel Beats is so widespread, it's impossible to not have seen at least one gif of this heart-wrenching moment. Even if you don't know these specifics, you probably still know that a key anime is designed to make you cry. And it's the viewer's emotional reaction to it that is the payoff from all the previous character building. As well as the realisation of the tragedy that was hinted at earlier in the series. Such a dramatic and tragic turn of events is fundamental to Nakige, but it isn't the genre's only defining feature. For as tragic and despairing as Maeda's works can be, an equally integral component of the Nakige genre is, more often than not, a happy ending. These adaptations are no exception. For evidence that this is specific to Maeda and not key at large, one only needs to see the ending of Planetarian, a project Maeda had nothing to do with. Be it the literal time travel of Charlotte or the kind of time travel in Clanad, usually everything returns to normal, either before or overwriting the series defining tragedy. All the pain is reversed, and all the suffering has come to an end. At this point, Maeda has managed to build up a story, tear it down, and build it into something better. A true tragic comedy. At the start of this video, I labelled the approach by Maeda and Key as formulaic, and hopefully by now I've demonstrated how that's the case. But make no mistake, as formulaic as these series appear to be, there's a reason I call it the Key Effect. These shows will resonate with you, and more often than not, they will ruin you. And I believe that's because of their formula, not in spite of it. Jun Maeda's monomyth will never be remembered or cited in the same way as Joseph Campbell's by Academia. It's nowhere near as comprehensive, lengthy, or widely applicable. But his impact on the visual novel medium, and anime by extension, deserves a place at the table for the literary canon, at least as far as anime is concerned. <laughs>